This is After Midnight, the only late night game show that's fun for the whole family, except the middle child. <laughs> Sorry, Tyler, life's not fair, but you know that by now. <laughs> Let's meet tonight's panelists. <laughs> he is America's preeminent cultural anthropologist. It's Weird Al Yankovic. <laughs> Uh, Taylor, let me just say right up front, I didn't come here to win. I came here to make friends. <laughs> but, but, but I'm already friends with these guys, so it seems kind of pointless for me to be here. So can I be excused? I, I just got... <laughs> 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 uh. Oh, no. Oh, fine. Let's all uh, back up. All right. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank God. Man. Oh, thank I God. Thought, uh, I thought that guy would never leave. <laughs> Price is right. It's Drew Carey. Oh, hey. Oh, hey, oh, oh. That's okay. That's all right. Just, no, no. No, I'm, I'm uh, just a regular guy from Cleveland. <laughs> my, uh, my wardrobe lady puts my pants on one leg at a time. <laughs> I'm a big deal out of it. And finally, according to him, he's the only famous person in Unfrosted the Pop Tart Story. <laughs> <laughs> On Netflix May 3rd, it's Thomas Lennon. <laughs> Taylor, I, I've been on the show before. It was a lot of fun. I was kind of hoping I would get a job so I wouldn't have to come back on the show. <laughs> But it turns out it was a self-tape, and then they were already going with Will Arnett, and it didn't work out. <laughs> but I'm glad it's great to be back. Yeah. It's great to be back. <laughs> the self-tapes, yeah. it never works out. OK, panelists, tonight you'll all be playing for a lumbar support pillow. these and it's changed my life. Did you know your back isn't supposed to hurt? <laughs> yeah. No. News, news to me. But before we get started, when's the last time each of you got super competitive during a game? Al? Oh, uh, remember the show Family Double Dare? Oh, yeah. Yeah, back in the 80s. yeah I, I was doing the show with, with Lou Ferrigno and I have a very fuzzy memory of this, but at one point I believe I had him in a chokehold <laughs> and choked out and uh, the paramedics came, there was blood, there was blood everywhere. <laughs> I, I don't anticipate that happening tonight, but... <laughs> but now you know what he's f***ing capable of. <laughs> How about you, Drew? Uh, I was on Celebrity Family Feud. <laughs> the, uh, best, once, the best version. Once with, <laughs> once with Team Drew Carey, mm -hmm. and then on two other teams, and I lost all three times. <laughs> I might hold the record for losing on a celebrity famous family <laughs> feud. Great. And while I'm at it, if Blaine Kapatch is watching, you can go f yourself. <laughs> wow. Because that's why we lost. <laughs> we got. Oh, shots fired. <laughs> Do your thing, Reddit. <laughs> Last time you were competitive. Uh, I don't get that competitive. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm one for one on new version of the show, so. <laughs> Although, the last time I was on the show, I got a little competitive with Kel Mitchell, and it was all in good fun. And then, of course, I followed him on social after the show, and uh, he didn't follow me back. <laughs> hey, wow. with probably good reason. <laughs> I'm fun in small doses. <laughs> <laughs> and he just knew that. Wow. Yeah. Man, shots fired on shots all three fired. of your Come on, answers. <laughs> all right, let's start with the group chat. Yeah. All right, raise your hand if you think you're a good person. I am the hum I'm the humblest guy in the world. <laughs> Ask anybody. <laughs> Nobody more humble than Drew <laughs> Jerry. A million times more humble than thou art. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're about to find
find out. During the writer's strike last summer, Drew Carey paid for the meals of thousands of striking writers at two local restaurants. So embarrassing. Stop, stop. I can't believe, I can't believe so many writers are still out of work. <laughs> Drew, I, mean, I have writers and I intentionally starve them. <laughs> the only thing you should be hungry for is better jokes. <laughs> Drew, for this truly good deed, I'm going to award you a thousand points. Oh. Now, Tom and Weird Al, what did you do for the striking writers? Um. Yes, Tom. Uh, as a proud member of the Writers Guild of America, thank you. Uh, I spent $5,600 of his money <laughs> on curly fries. Al? As an equally proud member of the Writers Guild of America, oh, sit down. Um, I, I paid for everyone's tips at Jumbo's Clown Room. Also, in, also important. <laughs> I like the picture. I used to be a roadie for the Grateful Dead. <laughs> we all had an emo phase when everything sucked and nothing mattered, except checkerboard vans, black eyeliner, and music that's depressing as hell. No one is immune to this phase, not even me. <laughs> that, is that you? I wish it was. Oh. <laughs> No, our graphics department put that together. I wish you, I was that cool. Was the FBI trying to catch Matt Gates? Nobody was immune to this phase, even me, and apparently not even horses. could speak, I'm sure he'd be saying, Mom, get out of my stall. I'm writing sins, not tragedies. <laughs> Fun fact, the reason they were panicking at the disco? Because they were horses. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't you people ever heard of closing the <laughs> damn barn door? <laughs> <laughs> I like that so much. So, panelists, what are other things you might hear from this rebellious teen horse? Al. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make me drink. You're not my real dad. <laughs> Tom. I don't know. I'll just never be the unicorn that uh, Janice is. Uh... <laughs> everybody, everybody loves dumb Janice. No one even cares that I also have leggings on. <laughs> Drew. Hey, man. Hey, bro. You need that special hey, hit me up. <laughs> there it is. There it is. All right, I know I come off like a total hard ass on the show. <laughs> I do. But in real life, I'm pretty non-confrontational. I can't say the same for Drake, who is currently in a very public beef with several rappers. Everyone from Kendrick Lamar to Rick Ross, Metro Boomin, ASAP Rocky, and The Weeknd. So panelists, since everyone seems to have a problem with Drake right now, why are you beefing with Drake? <laughs> Thomas? We bought that plane together, and he hogs it. <laughs> Drake told everybody at school that I'd sleep in a race car bed, but I sleep in a big boy bed. <laughs> is that, I'm not really, is that Drake from Degrassi? Yeah. <laughs> it is. Like, it really is. What is what's he been up to? <laughs> right, right. 
Why does everybody? I don't get it. You, you don't know, and that's why he's mad at you. He's so <laughs> Tight. All right, wake up your uncles, because there's a story about alcohol. <laughs> this past week, a man in Belgium was acquitted on drunk driving charges after it was proven that he has a rare condition in which his body makes its own alcohol. It's called auto brewery syndrome. <laughs> I also have that, but instead of alcohol, my body makes anxiety. <laughs> and I am buzzed right now. I'm jealous of this guy's excuse. So, panelists, what disease would you make up to avoid responsibility? <laughs> Drew. Sorry, bro, can't do it. I don't have the old pneumonia anymore. I got that new pneumonia. <laughs> Al. I'm not stalking you. I have a literal internal magnet that pulls me to the exact spot <laughs> under your bedroom window every single night. <laughs> Thomas. That rock cocaine has to be my butt. <laughs> I'm not hiding it. It's to keep my sleepy colon awake. Love, everything reminds you of that special someone, a song on the radio, or even the gentle frown of a smooth head blobfish. <laughs> oh. Oh. We're all thinking about someone. Oh. Which is probably why this Instagram video from Ray Oddball Fish went viral asking you which fish reminds you of your girlfriend. <laughs> My heart grew warmer standing next to you. Just for the record, here at After Midnight, we like to do things a little differently. So here are three girlfriends. Panelists, buzz in and tell me which girlfriend reminds you of your fish. <laughs> Thomas. The girlfriend fish of mine from this would be Linda, because uh, she drinks like a fish, and if you give her the tiniest bit too much food, she dies. <laughs> <laughs> Drew. Uh, Fran reminds me of my last girlfriend, because she's got her eyes closed and she's bored. <laughs> Gloria reminds me of my fish because she's sexy, blonde, and dead behind the eyes. <laughs> Drew is in the lead with 1,600 points. When we come back, our panelists are being drafted into the hashtag wars. Stick around.